My name is Derek and I test amplifiers to see how much power they actually put out. If you enjoy those kind of things, make sure you subscribe to my channel. Let's go on and see what we have today. What you guys know about the Old School SPL Challenge? If you haven't heard of this yet, check out OldSchoolStereo.com. We got all the details there. Also on Facebook, look up the group Old School SPL Challenge there and you can learn more about what's going on with this and how you can enter and all that fun stuff, all the rules. So related to that, today we're going to look at the Lanzar OptiDrive 50C and the Crossfire CFA 30HC. The Lanzar OptiDrive goes way back to 1994. That's when this model first hit the market. You'll see we have a picture here of a blue one and a black one. The blue one was 94 to 95. The black one was 96 to 99. The ratings for all of them were the same, 25 watts per channel at 4 ohms up to 800 watts bridged at 1 half ohm. So in 1994, out of the buyer's guide, you can see the MSRP was $1,500. Kind of high if you ask me. But 1998, which is when the black one I'm showing here is approximately made, you can see the Opti 50C was $1,100 retail. So $400 less just over a few years. Pretty interesting. And here's an ad from 1998 of Crossfire showing you what their amplifiers look like, the CFA series. Here it is. This is a beautiful looking amp, very well taken care of. And it was retailed for $720 back in 1998, as shown here in the Car Audio and Electronics Buyer's Guide. And the ratings, 30 watts by 2, up to 640 by 1. But you will notice there's two different ratings on there. We'll talk about that later on in the video. Here's a breakdown showing you the ratings at each different ohm load of the Crossfire versus the Lanzar. You can see in all different categories except for half an ohm mono, Crossfire is rated higher. So let's look at the dimensions here. Lanzar is about 24 inches long as opposed to 18.25 for the Crossfire and the width is about the same 9 inches and 9.6 inches. Here we'll take a closer look at the Lanzar first. It looks skinnier but actually the way the heat sink fins go they kind of go down at an angle so it's actually almost as wide as the Crossfire. You can see the two 8 gauge connections for power and ground coming out then you have terminal strip there for your remote and also for your speaker leads. We flip around to the other side you'll see stereo mono switch, gain control, subwave boost and you see your RCA Tiffany style full range inputs. No crossover on this model. Crossfire here is in mint condition. Very cool looking amp. It has insert terminals 4 gauge for power and ground. It has a maxi style 80 amp fuse and then 8 gauge for the speaker leads. We flip around to the other side, you'll see inputs and outputs, a level control, crossover control for low pass or high pass, variable crossover, variable bass boost, and a subsonic filter. Crossfire also offers an adjustment on the bottom via fuses to go between the high power mode and the high current mode. Now for the amp dyno drag test, we'll have it set in the high current mode because that is more fair against the Lanzar. Now we're going to fire up the SMD to more engineering amplifier dyno. Test out RMS power output from the amplifiers. First up, let's do 4 ohm test. Crossfire rated 240 watts, Lanzar rated 100 watts. Here we go. Crossfire on top, Lanzar on bottom. And boom! Crossfire 422, Lanzar 149. Let's try uncertified up to clipping. Again, 436, 154. Crossfire for the win. Dynamic test. Whoa! 462, nope, 472 versus 174. Oh boy, here we go. All right, Crossfire, smacking booty, taking names. You big dummy. Let's try two ohm test. Crossfire rated 420, lands are rated 200. Here we go. Crossfire on the top, lands are on the bottom, certified 1% THD, 620 to 274. Uncertified, up to clipping, 40 hertz. 638 to 287 and dynamic burst 2 ohms mono 818 versus 315 <laughs> are you ready Lanzar and here we go with a 1 ohm test crossfire rated 640 watts Lanzar rated 400 again we expect the crossfire to do better let's see what it does certified 770 versus 466 Uncertified, up to clipping. 
786 versus 554. Looks like Lanzar's catching up a little bit. What about dynamically at one ohm? How does it do? What? 1298 versus 535. Lanzar, you uh you ready for this? I'm not sure if you are. All right, so the fact that the Lanzar is rated at half an ohm mono, that's one quarter ohm stereo, we're gonna test it by itself. The Dyna won't do two channels in that mode. Let's try certified first. 644, so it didn't make it to its 800 watts that it's rated. Uncertified at the clipping, 668. And dynamically, can we get there dynamically? Almost 764 watts at 14.2. All right, now we'll take a look at the results. I'm sure you guys just saw most of the tests, but you can pause it if you like to see a closer look here. The one thing to note is the Lanzar actually did rate it at every single ohm load except for the half ohm mono. Crossfire did well above its rated on every single load too. So good job for both amps, but in this case, the Crossfire comes out on top. Now, let's check out what's inside of these jokers. See what powers them. Take the screws out of the bottom here of the Crossfire and the Lanzar, and we'll take a closer look, so hold on. biggest thing to take away here is the boards themselves are about the same length it's just the Lanzar has the built-in fan to help it stay cool and again going back to the old model Lanzar the 50c the blue one versus the black one I wanted to show you that they're virtually the same identically inside it's just there's some additional shielding for the newer models so thanks guys for watching my video I greatly appreciate your time hope you give me a thumbs up hope you enjoyed this amp dino drag race with these cheater amps and I think we know which one won this battle, but who knows who's going to win the next. So stay tuned for my next video and stick around till afterwards because I always have some special features for you. Thanks as always to my Patreon supporters, including Alan, William, and Tim. And an extra special thanks to Travis, Jay, Matthew, Marcus, Jesus, Tyre, Soundstream, Registry, High Five Vega. Big D, I'm out of here. All right, guys, as promised, doing some extra footage for you here. Remember, the earlier tests were done with the amp in high current mode. We're going to switch it to the high power mode, and we're going to see how it works there. You can see once we power the amp up, the lights will come on red, indicating it's in the high power mode. They come on green when it's in high current. So let's try 4 ohms mono first, rated 440 watts at 4 ohms mono. We got 617 at 14.58 uncertified up to clipping again all these tests are at 40 hertz 621 watts 14.58 dynamically again rated 440 watts and we're getting over 700 so very good job here crossfire now let's try the two ohm test in the high power mode this was going to be the most power we can get out of this 867 it's only rated 640 uncertified Look at this, over 900 watts. And dynamically at 2 ohms, 1105 watts at 14.69. Great job. Crossfire is way underrated on these amps. They are not going to be able to, you're not going to be able to find these anymore. Sorry. <laughs> Which thing about that, Big D? Yeah, boy!